everyone, I'm Dr. Lahari Desai and welcome to this lecture on radiographic appearances of dental anomalies. The learning outcome would be to describe radiographic appearance of dental anomalies. Dental anomalies can be classified as congenital when they are genetically inherited developmental when they occur during the formation of the tooth or teeth and acquired when they result from changes to teeth after the formation of the tooth has ha happened. Developmental anomalies can be either anomalies in the number of teeth, for example, supernumerary teeth or supplemental teeth or missing teeth. The size, uh, when there are anomalies involving the size, it could be uh, macrodontia or microdontia. And anomalies involving the eruption pattern of teeth, uh, for example, transposition. Under the altered morphology, there are various uh, different types of anomalies which we will go through one after the other. When we're talking about acquired anomalies, it could be attrition, abrasion, erosion, resorption, which could be external, internal, secondary dentine, pulp stones, pulp sclerosis, or hypersementosis. Let's look at uh, supernumerary teeth, starting with the anomalies involving the number of teeth. Uh, when we're talking about supernumerary teeth, we're talking about uh, more than normal number of teeth. So the most commonest example would be a mesiodens, which occurs within the uh, area between the roots of the central incisors. That's the commonest uh, location. And sometimes it can uh, even cause... Uh, um, block the path of eruption of a central incisor or even cause resorption of the teeth like the one you're seeing in the image here. This is a CBCT image also and most likely uh, mesiodens is generally inverted. So that's why the conical part of the tooth is appearing towards the uh, roots of the teeth and the root of the mesiodens is directed towards the crowns of the central incisor. Many a times, the mesodens also causes midline diastema, as you can see in image B, and that can be concerns uh, for aesthetics. When we're talking about multiple supernumerary teeth, it could be, for example, uh, associated with a syndrome or non-syndromic as well. Uh, these are examples of multiple premolars or multiple molar looking like supernumerary teeth. Missing teeth. Anomalies involving number of teeth could be uh, due to absence of one or few teeth, in which case it's called as hypodontia. The absence of numerous teeth called as oligodontia. And the failure of all teeth to develop is called as anodontia. These are a uh, case of an example of two um, missing teeth and malformed teeth in an ectodermal dysplasia case. Like I told you uh, earlier also, the anomaly associated with missing teeth could be associated with a syndrome or may not be associated with a syndrome. Macrodontia is a condition uh, where there is a um, larger size of the tooth. Uh, here we are pointing out towards a molar and a premolar. Uh, the premolar looks really wide in size and larger than the adjacent premolar and this is a macrodontia of the premolar bilaterally. Microdontia on the other hand is a terminology used for smaller tooth. Uh, the examples in A and B here are microdont third molars, uh, one of which has erupted as in A and the B has not erupted, it's still impacted. Whereas peg lateral is another common co example of a microdont where the lateral incisor is more conical or peg shaped and is smaller in size. Transposition is a condition in which typically uh, adjacent teeth have exchanged positions in their dental arch. This is one example of a case that I have seen personally where the canine and uh, premolar were transposed on both sides of the arch, maxillary arch. Fusion. Uh, fusion of teeth results from union of adjacent tooth germs of developing teeth. Fusion results in a reduced number of teeth in the arch and it's more common in the deciduous dentition but it can also be seen in permanent dentition. 
So this is an example of fusion of central and lateral incisors in both primary and permanent dentitions. What is important to note is that there is reduced number of teeth and increased width of the fused tooth mass. Concrescence. This occurs when the roots of two or more primary or permanent teeth are fused through cementum. The maxillary molars are the teeth which are most frequently involved, especially a third molar and a supernumerary tooth. Um, in which case the involved tooth may fail to erupt or may erupt. Uh, this is a case where extraction of one tooth may result in unintended removal of the second because the cementum bridge may not always be visual on a radiograph. So this is an example of two molars which are fused due to concrescence and hence extraction of one has resulted in the removal of the other tooth as well. Gemination. Gemination or twinning is a rare anomaly that arises when a single tooth but uh, attempts to divide. The result may be an invagination of the crown uh, and partial clefting or in rare cases complete division through the crown and the root producing identical structures. So complete twinning results in normal tooth plus a supernumerary tooth in the arch. The example that you're seeing in B and C here at the bottom of the screen is gemination of a maxillary left second premolar and on the top of the screen on the right side is gemination of a mandibular lateral incisor um, which is showing bifurcation of the crown and the pulp chamber but the roots seem to be a single root and in B where you're seeing almost complete gemination of a deciduous lateral incisor. Torodontism. The, the bodies of torodont teeth appear elongated and uh, roots are short the pulp chamber extends from um, normal position in the crown throughout the length of the elongated body, resulting in a more apically positioned pulpal flow. So as you can see, this looks like a bull's horns. That's why the word torodontism. You can see that the pulp chamber is very large and the roots are hence uh, shorter. Dilaceration. Uh, this is a disturbance in the tooth formation that produces a sharp bend or a curve in the tooth anywhere in the crown or the root. These are examples of a third molar showing dilaceration as well as a lateral incisor. Dense invaginatus, dense indente and dilated odontome. Dense invaginatus, dense indente and dilated odontome represent varying degrees of invagination or infolding of the enamel surface into the interior of a tooth. The least severe form of this infolding is dense invaginatus and the most severe form is a dilated odontome. Uh, this example on your left side of the screen is a radio opaque inverted teardrop outline of the dense invaginatus which you can see on the lateral maxillary lateral incisor. It's important to note the position of the invagination in the cingulum area of the uh, tooth crown. In uh, the next image, you have two images of the infolding of the enamel is more severe in this case of a dense indente. And the invagination begins near the incisal edge of these abnormally peg-shaped lateral incisors. When you have a very severe form of dense indente, it usually results in necrosis of the pulp with open apices and you can see as the image here there is rarefying mastitis at the root apex. Dense evaginatus. This is also called as Leong's premolar. It happens as a result of evagination or outpouching, uh, literally the opposite of what happens in dense indente. Uh, outpouching of the enamel often happens. The resultant enamel covered tubercle usually occurs in or near the middle of the occlusal surface of a premolar or occasionally molar tooth. So many a times this tubercle which is protruding outside the coronal surface of the tooth gets resorbed and results in the tooth getting infected and you can see in image A here that there is already a periapical pathology in the tooth. Molar incisal malformation is a rare developmental uh, dental anomaly seen in primary secondary molars and permanent first molars and sometimes the permanent maxillary incisor teeth where there is malformation of the molar as well as the incisor teeth. Amylogenesis imperfecta. 
This is a genetic uh, anomaly. Mutations lead to changes in the enamel of teeth in both dentitions. The enamel of the affected teeth fails to develop to its normal thickness and a yellow brown color enamel uh, is seen. Enamel may be abnormal and the surface may be rough, pitted, smooth or glossy. The crowns of the teeth may appear undersized with a rough square shape. There are four types, hypoclastic, hypomaturation, hypocalcified, and the hypomaturation hypoplastic type, which is generally associated with torodontism. This is the example of a hypoplastic uh, amylogenesis imperfecta. You can see the squarish shape of the teeth uh, with virtually no enamel seen. The hypomaturation type, which has really wide pulp chambers, uh, giving rise to a very uh, less opacity in the enamel area. Dentinogenesis imperfecta also called as hereditary opalescent dentine, is a genetic anomaly involving primarily the dentine, although the enamel may be thinner than normal in this condition. There are three types. Type 1 is associated with orangogenesis imperfecta. The tooth roots and pulp chambers of type 1 teeth are generally small and underdeveloped, and the primary dentition may be more severely affected than permanent dentition. Type 2 is similar to type 1 but affects dentine without any skeletal defects. That means it doesn't uh, follow or come along with odontogenesis imperfecta, osteogenesis imperfecta, sorry. Type 3 is the brandywine isolate which is seen in a, a population uh, in a region called as brandywine. This uh, exhibits large pulp chambers making them more susceptible to pulp exposure. So this is an example of dentigenesis imperfecta where you have bulbous crowns, constriction of the crown at the cement or enamel junction, short roots and reduced size of the pulp chamber and root canals. Dentine dysplasia. Dentine dysplasia is a genetically inherited autosomal dominant abnormality that affects dentine. In type 1 or radicular dentine dysplasia, the most marked changes are found in the appearance of the tooth roots. In type 2, which is also called as coronal dentine dysplasia, changes to the crowns are most clearly seen in the altered shape of the pulp chambers. This is an example of uh, a radicular dentine dysplasia where you have short poorly developed roots, obliterated pulp chambers and root canals and peripical rarefying ostitis as a result of the pulp involvement. Uh, it's important and interesting to note that there is a half moon or demi loon shape of pulp chamber that is seen. In uh, the coronal type of dentine dysplasia, there is obliteration of pulp chamber, reduction in caliber of the root canals, as well as pulp stones which obscure the flame shape or thistle shape of the pulp chambers that are associated with coronal dentine dysplasia. It's interesting to note that the areas of rarefying ostitis associated with some of the mandible anteriors due to pulp exposure. Regional odontodysplasia. These teeth are also called as ghost teeth, is a rare condition in which both enamel and dentine are hypoplastic and hypocalcified. This localized, uh, there is localized arrest in the tooth development and typically affects only few uh, adjacent teeth in the quadrant and that's why the term regional odontodysplasia. So this is an example where you see poor mineralization of the dental heart tissue structures and uh, it's interesting to note the lack of eruption and hypoplasia of enamel and dentine expressed mainly as short roots. Enamel pearl. This is also called as enameloma. It's a small formation of enamel on 1 to 3 mm which is a size of 1 to 3 mm in diameter uh, and that occurs generally at the roots of molars. You can see the extracted specimen as well as the radiograph in which they appear like radiopaque masses rounded masses on the root surface. Talon's cusp. A talon cusp is an anomalous hypoplasia of the cingulum of a maxillary or mandibular incisor. It results in the formation of a supernumerary cusp. Any developmental grooves that are present may become carry susceptible areas and the cusp may or may not contain an extension of horn of the pulp. Turner's hypoplasia is also called as a Turner's tooth, is a term used to describe a permanent tooth with local hypoplastic enamel defect. The most common defect is seen in the mandibular premolars. You generally see that only one or two teeth in the arch are affected and the rest of the teeth remain absolutely normal. Congenital syphilis. 
Uh, approximately 30% of individuals with congenital syphilis have dental hypoplasia that involves permanent incisors and first molars. This is caused by a direct infection of the developing tooth and the pulp of the tooth. The affected incisors are called Hutchinson's incisors, which are characterized by a screwdriver-shaped crown, and the molars are called as mulberry molars. When we're looking at acquired abnormalities now, we've covered the developmental ones. Um, some of the most commonest ones are attrition, leading to the uh, reduction in crown size because of loss of incisal area, as you can see in the image here. It can also affect the posterior teeth. Abrasion defects are generally due to trauma and occur at the cervical region of the teeth. It could be due to toothbrush trauma or sometimes in rare cases flossing trauma, which is, uh, results in a V-shaped structure or a curved uh, loss of tooth structure at the neck of the tooth. Resorption can be either internal or external resorption. Internal resorption generally starts off at the pulp of the tooth and uh, widens uh, from the pulp towards the cementum. Whereas external resorption happens at the root apex um, and again could be due to trauma to the tooth and uh, the tooth may become non-vital. Hypercementosis is uh, excessive deposition of cementum on the tooth roots. In most cases, it's uh, the cause is unknown and occasionally it appears on a super erupt, supra erupted tooth after bone loss of an opposing tooth. So more likely that the supra erupted tooth is now the weight bearing tooth and occlusal forces lead to excessive deposition of uh, cementum. Pulp stones and pulp sclerosis. Pulp stones are foci of calcification inside the dental pulp. They are probably apparent microscopically more than half of the teeth from young people and in almost all teeth from people older than 50 years old. Pulp sclerosis is another form of calcification of pulp chambers and canals. In contrast to pulp stones, this is more diffuse and the specific cause again is unknown, although it correlates strongly with age. So older the age group, more likely to have more pulp sclerosis. So that brings me to the end to the, of this chapter. I have used references from um, the radiology textbook. Uh, please go through this chapter for more information. Thank you.